Greetings. Here's I, the Great One himself, here with an anarchy moment. I was listening to a Pink Floyd bootleg, which I found on YouTube. And as I'm listening to this, you hear the record catch and not skip. What do you call it? When it gets stuck, where it kept hitting the same groove. It just made me smile to be listening to a digital file gotten off of YouTube that is a recording from a vinyl album. It's just me. It's just because I like vinyl. And it has nothing to do with what we're talking about today. What I'm talking about today, this is a response to a comment left on a YouTube video. It's morning, I'm starting to wake up. This was left by a user named Gray Warden on my video, on which one? Oh yeah, the pseudo-libertarians voting as violence and Paul bots. Part three of three. And he asked some questions. Now, as I probably have mentioned before, normally I ignore comments, especially on YouTube, because as I've said before, YouTube users out of everybody on the internet Although people on Tumblr might might dislodge YouTube users or YouTube commenters as the stupidest people on the internet, and that's a that's like an average. Okay, so not everybody who comments on YouTube is an idiot. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying if you average it out, the people who leave comments on YouTube videos are the least intelligent people on the planet Earth. However, Grey Warden actually left an intelligent comment and asked some questions. And I decided that I would take a break from being an asshole and, well, wait, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Whew. Boy, that was a lie. I decided I'd take a break from just ruthlessly trashing people and seriously answer these questions because they appear to be intelligent, honest, legit questions. Anyway, let me read what his comment was, and I'm going to go back through this and talk about this. So he writes, I'm confused. So you're saying that thinking... Hold on. Let me enlarge the font so I can read this and not be a fucking idiot. All right, here we go. I'm confused. So you're saying that thinking the government has any role in anything makes you not libertarian because that actually makes you anarchist. Libertarian just upholds liberty as the highest political end. I'm a libertarian because I believe that the role of the government, that it is the role of the government to protect... See, I, I enlarged the font. I still can't fucking read. I'm a libertarian because I believe that it is the role of the government to protect the rights of its citizens. I would say I'm a libertarian because I also believe it is not the position to make moral judgments about people, but only to uphold people's rights, such as life. If there's any, if there's some name for this, I'll gladly change it. But from what? Wait a minute. <sighs> Fucking Google. If there's <laughs> fucking Google, if there's some name for this, I'll gladly change it. But from what I've seen, I'm a libertarian. All right. Well, that was my best reading of something somebody else wrote ever in history. Anyway, it's okay. I'm gonna read all this again because we're gonna go through, then break this down and respond. All right. Now, just a quick update. First of all, whenever you see one of my videos or podcast and it says part three of three. You need to listen to the first two before. Sometimes they're just like this long rambling series. But in the pseudo-libertarian one, I guarantee you, you got to start with part one, listen to part two, and then listen to part three. If you jump into part three, you're going to be confused because I don't like to repeat myself. And when I do these like this, you know, this is one of those things where it should have just been one giant podcast, but I don't want to fucking kill people's ears by having to listen to me babbling that fucking much. Okay, he writes, I'm confused. Well, that's good. Because, you see, if you're confused, that means you're thinking. Okay, people who are not confused are the stupidest people on earth. 
If you go through your entire life being fucking certain of everything around you, you're a goddamn idiot. You're a fucking moron. Why, I'm not confused. Obama's the Messiah. It, no, I'm not confused at all that he's murdering people in foreign countries with flying robots. I'm not confused that his free Obamacare isn't actually free, and if you're poor, you can't get economic assistance to buy it, and that all the money from Obamacare goes to multi-billion dollar corporations. I'm not confused at all. I believe anything the Messiah says. Being confused is good. Being confused means that you're thinking. I'm confused about lots of shit. I've been confused about tons of shit in the past. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be confused about some shit tomorrow. Confusion means you're thinking. So we're off to a good start. It also means most people don't have the fucking balls or the self-esteem, the strongest, uh, strong enough self-esteem to even say they're confused. Because... I've talked about this book, which I still haven't finished reading. I got to finish call about wrongology, about the science of being wrong, and about being wrong, and about how people are so fucking terrified to say they're wrong, and being confused is you know it's it's our society. You're not supposed to say I don't understand this, or I'm confused by this, or this doesn't make sense to me, or I was wrong about that because in our society those are signs of weakness. No, in our society right now, which is controlled by the state, a sign of strength is having this absolute fucking certainty that can't be shaken. I, I believe everything I see on the TV. If Google said it, it must be true. Why Obama would never lie. Why Ronald Reagan was the greatest president ever right? All of this, this fucking certainty, this complete absence of doubt, that's not a strength. That's not a positive attribute. That's fucking slavery. All right, anyway, I beat that horse to death. You're confused. That's good. That's a good thing. You're saying that the government, you're saying that thinking the government has any role in anything makes you not libertarian. Okay. Now here... This is, this is going to be the longest, most boring part of this, but I've got to beat this dead horse. We're talking about words, and this whole thing about pseudo-libertarians, this was me talking about people using words. This whole three-part podcast was triggered by my disgust at conservative Republicans trying to call themselves libertarians. Because just as socialist is a bad word, so the socialists said, oh, we're not socialists, we're liberals. Then liberal became a bad word, and so the liberals said, well, we're not liberals, we're progressives. Well, progressive has pretty much always been a bad word. And so, oh God, there, see, then there's so much here. This is why you need to listen to the whole damn podcast, because hopefully I explained all of this in the three parts. If I didn't, then I failed. See, you're not supposed to admit that you failed. My God, you can't say you failed at something. Well, no, I mean, if people have to ask this question after listening to all three podcasts in that series, then I did fail. I did not sufficiently articulate what I was trying to say in a way that was understandable. And when you have giant fucking balls like I do, and when you don't care about being friends with people, you can admit that you failed. Anyway, it's enough talking about how great I am. <sighs> okay, language. Language has meaning. As Stefan Molyneux says, people who try to say language doesn't have meaning are using language to convey the meaning that language doesn't have meaning, which doesn't work. Because if language doesn't have meaning, if I say to you language doesn't have meaning, then that sentence can't have any meaning because I'm saying it to you in language, right? Language has meaning. Okay, we've done that. Words have meanings. And I've talked in the past, and I guess I'll talk briefly now about nebulous words. Nebulous words are words that they have meaning, but at the same time, they mean nothing, and at the same time, they mean everything. The example I like to use, because it's the greatest example ever, is Obama and his mastery of this. His entire campaigns were based on three words, change, hope, and forward. Right. And so when you say change, the word change, it has meaning. If you look up change in the dictionary, right? The word change has a meaning. So change has a definitive meaning. 
at the same time, the context you put it in, change means nothing and it means everything. So when I'm running for president and I say to you, if you elect me, you're going to get change. Well, what does that mean? Anything is change. I mean, yeah, if you elect me for president, you're going to get change. Now, I'll be the president instead of Obama. That's change. And so nebulous words like this are critical in politics and in propaganda and in marketing because as human beings, when we hear nebulous language like change, we interpret that as meaning whatever we want it to mean. So when Obama says, when you elect me, you're going to get change, well, people interpret that change as being whatever they want. Oh, when Obama's get elected, you know, he's going he's gonna to raise taxes on rich people. Now, I didn't listen to every Obama speech out there, but I don't know that he ever actually said he was going to raise taxes on rich people. But people, they hear the word change, and so they apply whatever meaning they want to that word. And that's how nebulous words worked. work. They worked that way in the past, and they work that way right now, and they're going to work that way in the future. And if you look closely at any political speech by anybody, and if you look at marketing, and if you look at propaganda, you will see nebulous words all over the place. So I've talked about nebulous words elsewhere in another podcast. I'm not going anywhere to that, but you got to sit the stage. Boom. Now, the... What is the meaning of a word, though? Meanings of words change. How does a word get its meanings? Well, there's the meaning you find in the dictionary. And then there is the meanings that are given to a word by the people speaking that language and using it. The example I like to use for this is gay because I think gay, gay illustrates this perfectly. Okay, back in the day when everybody walked uphill to get oxygen, gay meant happy. So if you read really old literature, oh, you look very gay today. That doesn't mean the person looks homosexual. That means the person looks happy. Now, somehow or another, and I don't know how this happened, somehow or another, gay came to be used as a word for homosexual men. How and why this came into existence, I honestly don't have a fucking clue. But nowadays, when you say gay, it's, this, it's taken now to mean a homosexual man. Now, at the same time, right now in our society, the word gay is also being used in a more... And see, this is where it get really is nebulous. So the first definition, gay is happy. That's in the dictionary. At least I, it might not be anymore. I don't know. If you get an old dictionary, it is. Gay as being a homosexual man, it's established. Gay is also being used by people as an insult. So, for example, people say, God, Justin Bieber got arrested. That's so gay. Now, does that mean Justin Bieber getting arrested is a homosexual male? Well, no, because Justin Bieber getting arrested, that's a, that's a verb. That's a situation. That's a scenario. It can't have a sexual orientation, nor can it have gender. And so gay, when used in that sense, has, at least for me, what is a very nebulous meaning. Like, I can define gay as being happy. I can define gay as homosexual male. But gay in that third sense, like, I, I don't really have an exact phrase to define exactly what gay is meaning in that sense. But way, what? Uh, <sighs> use Mr. Tongue and Mr. Lips. Come on, you can do this. But gay in that third sense, means something distinct and different. So, we have one word, we have at least three different meanings. Homosexual males, and some other people, are upset about gay being used in the third sense, as in, pan, this situation is gay. 
or God, that guy is the gayest tool I ever saw in my life, because they think it's derogatory to homosexual men. And because, like most people, when they get a hold of a word and they've taken ownership of this word, and you know, gay, that's our word now, we don't want anybody else to use it. And this is all completely understandable because this was the entire point of this series of podcasts. Libertarian. What does libertarian mean? I guess I could pull out the fucking dictionary. Let's try this. I have this thing here. It's called a dictionary. This is not the internet. This is not Google. This is actual dead trees. By the way, when you print a book on paper, it consumes no more energy. All that internet shit that you guys think is better than books, the internet uses huge amounts of electricity which are generated by burning fossil fuels. Did you know that? Burning fossil fuels contributes to global warming. And we're all gonna die. Global warming, great example of language manipulation. It used to be called global warming. The globe is very specific. Warming is very specific. But of course there is no global warming, so it was changed to climate change. Well, climate is fairly specific. Change, however, again, change means anything. Change means nothing. I've talked about this before, right? If it's hotter than last year, it's climate change. If it's colder, it's climate change. If it rains more, climate change. Rains less, climate change. More tornadoes, climate change. Fewer tornadoes, climate change. Anything and everything is climate change. That's why it's called climate change, not global warming. And that's distracting me from looking up the word libertarian on these pieces of dead tree, which are no longer causing any pollution to the environment whatsoever, unlike your Google servers, which are, you know, chomping down electricity made from burning fossil fuels. All right, here we go. Libertarian. I found it. A person who believes in the doctrine of the freedom of the will. A person who believes in full individual freedom of thought, expression, and action. There's your definition from the dictionary of a libertarian. Person who believes in the doctrine of the freedom of the will. A person who believes in full individual freedom of thought, expression, and action. Notice it doesn't say partial expression of action or thought or anything else. So there's your dictionary definition of a libertarian. If you are, and this was my thing, right? Julie Berinsky, uh, Ron Paul, Glenn Beck, all these people trying to call themselves libertarian, all of these people are statist. They all believe there should be laws. They all believe that there are things that other people besides them can do that should result in those people being locked in cages. If you think other people should be put in cages for shit that they did that doesn't affect you, that does not initiate violence against you, or violate your property rights, you're not a fucking libertarian. So just as homosexuals, homosexual men and other people, it's not just homosexual men, don't like people using the word gay in the third sense, I, as a libertarian and anarcho-capitalist, which are, as far as I'm concerned, exactly the same thing, and I'll talk about that in a second if I remember. I had notes for this, but God knows where they are, so I'm just fucking free-balling it. Hold on, train of thought, derailed. I'm, I'm bringing it back. Yes, just as some people don't like the word gay being used in that third sense because they believe it detracts from the use of the word gay in the second sense, I feel their pain because I have exactly the same thing happening when I hear some fuckwad Republican calling himself or herself a libertarian. No, it's, I, it's exactly the same reaction. Hey, asshole, you're fucking stealing my word, okay? Just like, the home, just, just like people are going, don't call that shit gay. That's not what gay means. You're stealing our fucking word. Okay? Yes, when I hear some idiot Republican, I'm a, ten, I'm a libertarian. No, you're not. You're a fucking neocon fuckwad. Stop stealing my word.
And so that was the whole thing that set this off. All right, so you're saying that thinking the government has any role in anything makes you not libertarian. That's his question. Yes, yes, yes. The answer to that is a fucking definitive yes. If the government is controlling your actions, and remember, the government can only control other people's actions through either the use of force or the threat of force. There is no such thing as government without force. There is no such thing as government without violence. If the government passes a law that says you can't walk on the sidewalk, and then you walk on the sidewalk, and the government does not use violence and force to either remove you from the sidewalk or fine you money for walking on the sidewalk or put you in a cage for walking on the sidewalk, then the government, for all practical intents and purposes, does not exist. So yes, all government requires the government to use force or the threat of force in order to manipulate other people's behavior. Libertarian and anarcho-capitalist, as far as I'm concerned, mean exactly the same thing. A libertarian, again, dictionary definition, a person who believes in full individual freedom of thought, expression, and action. It doesn't say partial individual freedom, it says full individual freedom. Full individual freedom means, as far as I am concerned, that you adhere to the non-aggression principle or the zero aggression principle, that you do not initiate aggression against other people. And it means, number two, that you respect the property rights of others. And within those confines, anything you do is entirely up to you. So as far as I am concerned, libertarian and anarcho-capitalist are 100% interchangeable. Now, of course, this is called the Cynical Libertarian Society because at the time, 10, 11, 12 years ago, whenever I started doing this, I was a lot stupider than I am today. I was also very confused, and I especially was confused because I was actually a right-wing minarchist, and I th thought I was a libertarian because I didn't actually know what the fuck a libertarian was, nor did I even have an inkling of a clue what an anarcho-capitalist was. And also, the cynical anarcho-capitalist society just really doesn't sound very good. Cynical libertarian society has a nice little ring to it, although maybe that's just because I've said it so many times. Because, okay, his next statement here is, because that actual actually makes you an anarchist. Yes, right, exactly, yes. An anarchist and a libertarian are the same fucking thing. Libertarian just upholds liberty as the highest political end. Now, this is him giving a definition of what he thinks a libertarian is. So he's saying libertarian just upholds liberty as the highest political end. And Gray Warden, this is not an attack on you. I'm asking you because you're confused. You're thinking, I need you to think. What the fuck does that mean? Think about this again. This is like climate change. What does that phrase mean? upholds liberty as the highest political end. Okay, liberty cannot be a political end. Pol any political... What, how do I want to say this? Anything that's done within a political system is being done by the government. Government requires violence. Violence and liberty don't really go together. So to say that a libertarian is someone who upholds liberty as a political end, and it, it, so in a philosophical sense, what does this mean? What is a political end? So, I, I mean, I, I, and this, this is a serious question because see, this is my point. When you say something like this, you've got to think about what the fuck does that actually look like in real life? Again, zero aggression principle. I can tell you exactly what not initiating aggression against other people looks like. It means I do not walk up to another person and hit them in the face. It means I don't go around shooting other people with a rifle. 
It means I don't trip people as they're walking past me on the sidewalk. I can tell you exactly what zero aggression principle looks like. And I can tell you exactly what is a violation of the zap, right? If I walk up to you and pull out a baseball bat and hit you in the head, I have violated the zero aggression principle. All right, respect for property rights. What does that look like? Okay, respect for property rights means if I'm walking down the sidewalk and I see a wallet laying on the sidewalk, I pick it up and I open it and I find an ID and I contact the person and I give it back to them without taking anything out of the wallet. That's what it looks like. Violating property rights means I knock the window out of your house and I crawl through that hole and I grab your laptop computer and I take it home with me. I have violated property rights. Okay, what does uphold liberty as the highest political end? I'm asking you, explain to me exactly what that looks like. Exactly what is that? You can't. Those are nebulous words. That is politician speak. That means absolutely nothing. It means nothing. Liberty as the highest political end. Adolf Hitler was fucking upholding liberty. We have, we have to get Hitler in here. Liber Adolf Hitler was upholding liberty as the highest political end. He got rid of the Jews because he thought they were hoarding wealth. He started the war because he wanted to expand Germany's boundaries because he wanted to create living space for the German people. Right? He was trying to restore the dignity of the country of Germany on the international front. All this other shit. Adolf Hitler was fucking upholding liberty in, as the highest political end. This is a phrase that means nothing. And again, I'm not insulting you. I'm, I'm encouraging you to think about this. Because believe you me, that is exactly the kind of shit that would have come out of my mouth 10 years ago. In fact, it probably did. If you go back and you listen to the early episodes of Stating the Obvious, you will hear some shit come out of my mouth. That it, and that's one reason I do this podcast. You see, by putting all this out and by having my political, social, philosophical, economic evolution occurring in a way that anybody can go back and see what I said, when I said it, how I said it. See, I can't fucking hide behind this facade that stupid people need where they pretend they've always been right all their lives. Well, that's great. You have the same fucking belief system you had when you were eight years old and you think you're a fucking genius? Get the fuck away from me and shut up. This is why, as I said, the fact that you are confused is a good thing because you are thinking and the 99% can't fucking do that. They can't do it. They can't. Okay, his next sentence is, I'm a libertarian because I believe that it is the role of the government to protect the rights of citizens. No, this is wrong, wrong. Oh, this is so wrong. First of all, government cannot protect rights. This, to an extent, implies that rights come from government and they don't. But no, the government cannot protect your rights. Now, I'm leaving out of this the fact that there's no such thing as rights. And in fact, as I and other people have said, the only rights you have are the rights you can defend. Let, let me give the example I always use. Everyone thinks you have a right to life. In fact, you mentioned this one down here. I think you mentioned only, a, yes, but only uphold people's rights such as life. Okay, you do not have a right to life. Let me explain this to you. You're standing here, and somebody walks up behind you, and they lift up a gun, their little 9 millimeter pistol, and they pull the trigger. And the bullet comes out of the gun, and it's coming towards your head, and it's coming towards your head, and it's coming towards your head. As the bullet gets close to your head, it doesn't go, oh shit, this person has a right to life, and go de-solid and pass through your head without doing any harm. No, the bullet goes in your head, and you fucking die. You do not have a right to, there's no such thing as a right. Again, this is a word. When people, I have a right to life. Wait, wait, wait. What exactly do you mean by right? And I know that in my definitions, I said that an ANCAP or a libertarian is someone who respects the property rights of others. And I'm looking for a way to phrase that differently because I don't like using the word rights in there, in property rights, because rights don't exist. I just said that. But Rome was not built in a day. 
and I'm working on this. And there's better ways to express this that don't use the word rights. But for right now, we're just going to use it. I also you do use the word rights because when you say that, and there's a and boom, we're back again to language. When you say rights, everybody knows what you mean, but nobody really knows what you mean. Again, it's like change. The word rights is a nebulous word. When I say people have rights, some people think, oh yeah, you're right, I do have rights. I have rights to health care, I have a right to welfare, I have a right to, you know, the money of other people via taxation and redistribution of income. And other people, when you say the word rights, they think, yeah, I have a right to life and a right to property, and that's it. So rights, Again, until you're actually defining and nailing down exactly what you mean with that terminology, it fucking means nothing. It means nothing. So no, the government cannot protect your rights. The government, I mean, how, how, how does the, again, how does you think the government is going to do this? The government can only protect your rights by using force and violence. If somebody comes and violates your right to life, attempts to violate your right to life, then they have initiated aggression against you. Zero aggression principle says while you cannot initiate aggression, you can defend yourself when aggression is initiated against you. So you can defend yourself, but the government cannot fucking defend you unless there's somebody from the government following you around 24 hours a day to make sure nobody harms you. How is the government going to defend you? How does the government protect your right to life? So no, the role of the government the, the role of the government is to enslave people. That's the role of the government. Okay, The government cannot survive without using violence. The government cannot survive without money to fund the violence. Where does the money come from? Well, since the government doesn't actually produce anything, the government has to get that money via theft. Yes, we call it taxation because you know we don't want to call things what they are because that would make it really fucking obvious. And you know, and this is this is the minarchist position. Believe me, again, I've been there. You listen to my shit ten years ago. I was a fucking minarchist. I would have. I'm pretty sure I said shit like, "Well, the government shouldn't do anything except for the military," you know. And as the as the argument has been made a thousand fucking times, why? Well, yes, the military. The, the the military. Yes, the government is evil and incompetent. So let's let them only do the really important things, like control the nuclear weapons. Yeah, that's a brilliant idea. Okay. It's the role of the government to protect the rights of its citizens. No, it is the role of the government to not exist. When government exists, its only role, by definition, has to be theft and violence. Government does not exist without theft and violence. He then writes... I would say I am a libertarian because I also believe it is not the position to make moral judgments about people, but only to uphold people's rights, such as life. I think what he's meaning here is he would say he's libertarian because I also believe it is not the position of the government to make moral judgments. He left something out of the sentence, but I think he's saying he doesn't believe the government should make moral judgments about people. Well, okay, I mean, there's nothing... That, you know, that's not bad. All I would say, though, is look at reality. The government makes moral judgments constantly. I mean, how, how can you have a government without making moral judgments? Again, okay, so if the government is going to protect people, people's right to life, and so you come up and you try to kill me, and the government steps in to protect me, isn't the government making a moral decision that the other person who's trying to kill me is making a morally bad choice in trying to kill me and thus stepping in to try to stop them? I mean, even on the most obscure philosophical sense, again, how can you have a government that doesn't make moral judgments? Now, in a practical sense, every single day, the government makes moral decisions left, right, and center. Virtually everything the government does. You can't smoke in here. You can't do drugs. You can't have sex for money. But if you pay somebody money and they have sex and you film it, now it's pornography and now you can sell it as long as you pay taxes on it. The government makes moral choices about which people in foreign countries to kill with flying robots. The government makes moral choices about which people to put in cages. 
The government makes moral choices about who should pay more income tax than others. The government makes moral choices about who should be allowed to get married and who shouldn't be allowed to get married. Government makes moral choices constantly. And this is what people want government to do, right? Because government is all about, for, from the position of the sheep, people love the government because the government is their way to control other people, right? I don't like those nasty homosexuals, so I'm going to vote for this bill that's going to prevent them from getting married. I don't like those dope smokers, so I'm going to, I'm going to make sure that marijuana stays illegal in my state. I mean, government is nothing if not the mechanism by which the sheep attempt to control the behavior of other people. So finally he says, if there's some name for this, I'll gladly change it, from, but from what I've seen, I'm a libertarian. I would disagree with you. Just And again, my knowledge of Gray Warden is based entirely upon this little snippet that he left, but it sounds to me like you're a minarchist. And by God, there's it's a lot better to be a minarchist than a fucking liberal or a fucking conservative. You're a minarchist. You're not a libertarian in any sense of what the word libertarian means to people who use the word. See, and again, this, this is my whole point. This was the whole point of the thing is you've got all these fucking... And Glenn Beck is not a minarchist by any stretch of imagination. Ron Paul, he's kind of minarchist -y. Julie Brinsky, she's minarchist -y. But just like a homosexual male who has embraced the word gay is going to say people saying, oh my god, Justin Bieber is so gay. That doesn't make, that's not the right use of the word gay. I, as a anarcho-capitalist and a libertarian, are going to say to people who use the word libertarian, meaning minarchist, that no, that's not a fucking libertarian. And it, it all comes down to language. And this is the whole, again, this is not the whole, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the whole battle. Ah, my voice. <clears throat> All right, take two. My voice just died on me, which indicates it's time for me to shut the fuck up because I've talked too much. Oh, I don't ever... I, I talk too much. Whoa, there's a new one. Mark this day on your calendar, kitties. And that's what this whole series of podcasts was about, <clears throat> is people trying to say, oh, I'm a libertarian, because these people know that being a conservative is becoming a bad word. I mean, the Repub... God, my voice. Hold on. <clears throat> the Republicans have screwed the pooch and pretty much embarrassed themselves, and they're not going to get the presidency back for a while. So they're looking to rebrand themselves. It's just like global warming had to rebrand as climate change in order to keep fooling the stupid people. Republicans need to rebrand themselves to keep fooling the stupid people. And the brand they've chosen to try to transition to is libertarian. And it pisses me off that they're trying to take my fucking word. And that's why, I, okay, I said I was going to talk about this. I didn't. Good thing my memory kicked in. That's why I call myself an anarcho-capitalist now. Because, and there's a lot of people debating this, and Michael Dean over at Freedom Fiends talks about this often, you know. Well, I call myself an anarcho-capitalist, but those are like the two worst words for everybody, because nobody wants to be an anarchist, and everybody hates capitalism. And I'm like, yes, that's great. That's why I call myself an ANCAP, an anarcho-capitalist, because Republicans are trying to steal libertarian, because it sounds fairly harmless. Nobody, at least in the foreseeable future, is going to try to take the word anarcho-capitalist and apply it to themselves, right? So I don't have to worry about somebody trying to steal that word to rebrand themselves in an effort to fool people. So there you go. Thank you. Thank you for an intelligent comment and an intelligent question. Thank you for being confused. And thank you for just fucking thinking and distinguishing yourself from the 99% or fucking sheep idiot fuckwads that surround you every day walking around like zombies just moaning Obama and unable to think for themselves. So I encourage you to, you know, think about what I've said 
don't fucking mindlessly believe anything I said. Think about it. And do what I said. Look, take your phrase about a libertarian just upholds liberty as the highest political end. And think about what in the fuck does that really, really mean. And f try to figure that out. And if you can come up with, if you can explain to me exactly what that means and what that looks like, by all means, do it. Just leave the comment on the channel. Send me an email. Whatever the hell you But tell me. I would love to hear this because I'm totally willing to hear you defining these concepts in a way that is solid and makes sense. Because I'll have a conversation with anybody who listens to this podcast who can have a fucking intelligent conversation. Okay, If you're just out there spewing shit, well, you used bad language. Yeah, I sure as fuck did use bad language. You called women cunts. Yep, I sure did. You hate feminists. Yes, I do hate feminists. You're, you're, a, you're a fucking racist, sexist, homophobic. Yes, and coming from you, that's a compliment. Okay, I'm not going to have a conversation with those people. But if you got some, if you can do like Grey Warden and have a fucking conversation and ask an intelligent question and make some points, I will converse with you all fucking day long. 